Hello. 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 Ooh. <laughs> well, I was deliberately off key. <laughs> you deliberately off key bastard. Hello and welcome to Regular Features. Episode 183. My name's episode 183. My name's Matt Lees. <laughs> I'm joined by uh, <laughs> just trying to do that naturalistic film thing where yeah, people it's talk about each other. It's, it's like, fine. It's like, we just like, compact all of the information into one overlaid sentence, and then people can kind of decode it at home. Who are you, Jonathan Blythe? I like you, and I'm Steve Hogarty. And I'll say my name again. Oh. I'm Jonathan Blythe. Oh. <laughs> Ooh, there's my ego falling out of my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> and what do we got on the show tonight? Well, on the show tonight, <laughs> Matthew. <laughs> <laughs> I'm. <laughs> I will be. <laughs> I. I'll tell you what I've got. I've got a feature about women and the things what they say that they are. I'm going to but aren't. I'm going to learn <laughs> virtual reality and what I learned about virtual reality in America. And I'm going to be dwelling on the imminent death of my nan. Cool. Seriously, <laughs> she's in hospital right now and very unhappy. <laughs> It's like cereal. It's real. It's live. It's happening. It's raw. Well, welcome to the show. Yeah. Pow. I'm pretending we're all Jonathan Ross. Well, it's a good my regular features. I am in paradise. <laughs> bum, bum, bum. to go first <laughs> I don't Lock shut up about your dead now I, you've got holidays I don't, I don't want to go first <laughs> he had a holiday I sort of had a work thing we want to talk about that sure your nan's dying right now but I well, don't see any I am pushing it the, the tragedy plus time equals comedy into sort of like inverse proportional dimension now because she's not dead but she might be by the time you're listening to this oh wow Wow, Nan, way to crank up the tension. You're a true master of drama. Wow. I've always should... respected that about you. R.I.P. maybe. We should continue to <laughs> ramp up the ramp up the tension through, throughout the podcast. You can just periodically remind everybody that your nan might be dying right now. If my phone can... if my phone buzzes, I am getting the text. Wow. So we can tell you, have you got an if this then that set up? <laughs> no, just a mum who sometimes texts. <laughs> <laughs> you, you don't need IFTT, do you though? If mum <laughs> if mum texts, make my phone vibrate. <laughs> if Nan dies, post to Tumblr. In the comedy <laughs> equals tragedy plus time equation, what happens if the comedy comes before the tragedy? Is it like a some sort of comedy warp field? Well, I don't know, perhaps. Is a Higgs you've boson got, produced. What like when you've got years? their First, before the tragedy happens. Sort of like, yeah, well, actually, no, it just doesn't work. You, yeah, maybe you cause the tragedy. Maybe it's become a self fulfilling prophecy. Because for mm. years at Leeds Festival, people used to go around shouting that Scylla Black was dead before people had smartphones. And then eventually, of course, she did die. And it wasn't like funny or irreverent. Prescient. So prescient. Yeah, I mean, like, they kind of they, they got the. They guessed it, but they were just about a decade early. Um, but it did mean that whilst that joke was quite funny at the time, it became like it didn't become any funnier or less funny when it actually happened. I was but, coming home on the train uh, last week, and I learned that Paul Daniels had died. And I turned to Reese and said, "Reese, Paul Daniels has just died." And the people in the seats behind me said, "What? Paul Daniels has died?" <laughs> I was like, "Yes." Paul Daniels has just died. And the rumour spread, the rumour, the fact spread along the train. Like, everybody, Paul Daniels has died. And the, then the train came to a stop and the driver said, Ladies and gentlemen, Paul Daniels has died. The train will now reverse <laughs> to see if we can stop this from ever happening. If we just all retrace our footsteps to the point when he was last alive and then stay perfectly still. <laughs> Oh, I think this is a fantastic British reboot of Source Code. (laughs) Steve repeatedly on the same train over and over again, wondering if there's anything you can do. Yeah. Oh, man. There's a fervour around the deaths of celebrities. There's a sadness... But also a buzz that is... That has inspired many think pieces. So not to admit the illicit thrill of a dead celeb. Well, yeah, I mean... To my mind, you don't know that celebrity, so why should you be so excited by it? Whereas I've got every reason to be thrilled by the imminent death of my grandmother. <laughs> what? What? Why are you looking at me like that, Matt? <laughs> uh, the, the ways you approach grief are no, interesting why? and beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> we can all learn from this. I just, yeah. I'm just 
sad that it's like, at this stage, i still got a grandmother, so I've still got some last vestige of youth. Yeah, you're well old. How could you exa- have got a That's exactly. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it, like, surely she's, she's no Good place innings, on this planet. Because I reckon say, I won't yeah. have any in about five years. Really, really? I put a bet on that. If we had any, have we got any uh, any listeners who work for betting companies? You want to bet that your grandparents will be totally animated before mine are? I'll take that. Well, bet. no, yeah. no, no, no. And no, I'll no, also no, buy no. a gun. No. I'll take this <laughs> little pillow. It's a little face sized pillow. Not before yours are, because as we as we've stated, you know, your, your grandma's like. I thought your phone went off. Now I'm keep. I'm going to keep thinking your phone's going off. It's oh, not, she could pull. It's for not it. a race. It's not a race. Oh. So I went to uh, San Francisco for the Games Developers Conference. We're not week. doing the Dead Man first. No, no, no. no, right. no. Okay. We're, right. we're He's going to keep popping it in so that everyone's reminded of mortality. Yeah. In a really horrible way. And to, it's remind everyone to enjoy your features all the more. So you've got to live your life yeah. while you're alive. You've you got to. You've got to just <laughs> ignore all that stuff and enjoy your life while you can. And actually on that note of ignoring reality and enjoying life while you can, the most disturbing thing about GDC for me this year was the fact that you had all these geeks from around the world flying around to try virtual reality where you can basically imagine you're in another place doing other things. And this was happening in San Francisco, a city full of homeless people on hallucinogenic drugs who are literally <laughs> walking around as if they're in another place doing other things mm. and being totally ignored. And this that weird, that was really strange for me, being like having people queuing up to get the same experience that these people on the streets were having in a really unpleasant way. It's honestly like when you watch lots of people with these headsets on, like moving around doing things as if like the, the world isn't around them and then see the same people doing it without headsets. It's, it's, it's hard not to draw it. I would not do in a room with people watching. If I went to these press events, I'd say, put me in a dignified room. I don't want to be one of those faces on a Tumblr blog of fat blokes with ginger beers with their mouths agape looking like fucking idiots. <laughs> well, I want a hang glider. <laughs> and also, I've had so many people saying, what, why are you testing so many VR units? It's always fat blokes with ginger beers. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I punched someone in the back of the head when I had a go on it because what's amazing is that, yeah, a lot of the time when, when it all started out, it was all swanky big booths where it's like you go into this little thing, they shut the door and you've got like all this room around you to mess around, etc. But now, as it's kind of more prevalent and more people have the headsets you just have people at conventions like you do with normal demo booths where they just have one little screen and a little bit of space on a kind of long stretch of thing with lots of different games and it means you put this headset on and as far as you're concerned you're in this big digital space but there are literally people standing about a foot and a half to your left playing other games they should know they should give you all the room but it's also amazing when you like reach out and go boomf and then just hit something and it's not in the world and because you're looking at things you go that's weird I just hit something but there's nothing there have you said where you were where's this virtual reality temple yeah it was in the GDC in uh, San Francisco what does which- GDC mean it's Game Developers Conference. What's a video game? <laughs> it's uh, <laughs> oh, you've got me. Yeah, you need to. People might be listening for the first time. They don't know what a video game or a developer conference. Well, is. basically, it's where people go to talk about video games, and every now and then they get really excited about something new and pretend that it's going to change the world forever, and everything's going to be just that. So, about five years ago, it was all about mobile and being like, "Oh, forget every other video game. That's, all video games fucked. are on mobile phones." Obviously, nobody plays mobile phone games now. Obviously, yeah. well, they strap them straight. To their eyeballs, and they I don't know, is that something that they're that's what they're doing now? This year it was all VR, and everyone was like, Ah, oh, virtual reality. And I had a go on it, and it's quite fun. Um, the thing I found about VR, which is most amusing, is the fact that when you a lot of these things are quite these isolated spaces you go into. So I was having to go on one thing, it was like a fairground, but you're like in a fairground bit on your own with all these fairground machines, and it just meant that like I immediately became quite disinterested in playing like the little basketball hoop game and just wanted to cause trouble and started realizing I could throw the basketballs around the room, and I said, the dev like what happens because one game had these little rubber balls you know, throw thing I'm like what happens if I start throwing these into the holes of other machines like Ooh. will they come back and he's like no and I'm like wicked <laughs> <laughs> and just start like trying to clog up like machines with things that aren't supposed to go in like, it takes us seven hours to code each basketball please don't destroy them <laughs> <laughs> It was brilliant realizing I could just drop it on the floor and watch it roll away, and there was nothing anyone could do about it. Mind you, I did spend about. Were there, were there people be able to see the ball you dropped and roll away? I mean, they can reset it. Um, so yeah, no, yes, it was still there. It still existed in the room until they reset the game. The mess I'd caused remained intact, oh, which was kind of fun. It's confu- It's oh. difficult to know how mischievous this is. 
<laughs> it wasn't terrible. Virtual, it can be are you quite mischievous. Virtually mischievous or really mischievous? I don't know. I mean, it was weird. That guy who was extremely mischievous and went around invading ladies' spaces for half an hour until she trauma he traumatized both her and himself because he realized what a cunt he was. Yeah, that was, that was the thing. There yes. was there was lots of kind of quite quite cunty people things happening uh, this year, as there always are in That's this space. It, my my favourite story was apparently a guy from Oculus who went to a gay mixer, which is basically just a place for gay men to with gay people to meet up and like. And uh, a guy from Oculus turned up to uh, to let them know that this that event was not necessary. <laughs> <laughs> which really? Is, which is incredible. Who was that? I don't know. Just an Oculus employee. They've probably got loads of them because it's a big company. But I like the fact they just turned up and said, I just want to let you people know that uh, this is uh, unrequired, obviously, because it's like just creating segregation or something. Oh, fuck you. I know. Oh. This is unbelievable. Unbelievable. I know that. <laughs> because I there's pricks it. like you in yeah. the outside of here. <laughs> but it's incredible. Like, I heard that story and I was just like, uh, did well, he also walk into the women's bathrooms and go, <laughs> um, just so you know, you are segregating yourselves from everyone by being in here and keeping those sweet boobies out of my eyesight. Well, it's funny because <laughs> I won't stand for it, women. <laughs> a lot of the organisation of the event uh, has become very progressive, but there's still like kind of little flecks of people who don't like that. Like they've got like gender neutral bathrooms, which is great. Why not? There's loads of bathrooms, so why not make one of them gender neutral? It's not a big deal. But I'm sure there were lots of people who went going. Plah, plah, plah. Oh, this is unnecessary. But um, I but think then, was... then they thought, maybe I could see a boob. <laughs> I'm sure women get <laughs> boobs out in the bathroom. But yeah, um, there was lots of VR chat. I had to go on a VR thing, which is actually amazing fun. But I realised that my legs are not VR ready because it was kind of a game where you have these pistols and you can like dodge laser shots by like lunging and it goes to slow motion and you basically get to be like you in like Equilibrium or The Matrix and I loved it and I got really into it but then the next day my legs hurt so much because you're just oh. not supposed to be lunging around like 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 you're in The Matrix yeah Neo's legs would often hurt the next day <laughs> <laughs> yeah I'm sure he works out before he gets involved oh, yeah. but I did hear a couple of fun stories that about was the, what the red pill was it was a muscle relaxant pill for <laughs> legs <laughs> <laughs> an asshole <laughs> A lot of bumming in the Matrix. Yeah. They don't tell you that, but that's what the red pill does. Yeah. You, see, you see the same cat walking past the door again and again while you just bum. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. Um, but yeah, I had some fun stories about VR, which I think are two things I, th- I heard which made me laugh. One, that they found out that for a lot of people, um, it stops them making, making VR making them feel ill by quite a lot if you put a virtual nose in. So they encode in virtual noses. I heard of that, yeah, because... Uh. So in your natural you vision, you can you can always see your nose, but you, your brain sort of blocks it out. But if they don't physically put one in the game in front of you, then it makes a lot of people feel ill. Yeah. Which I like the idea of it being like, yeah, but you your brain knows what your nose looks like, right? So we're going to have like cameras that scan your nose. Like, please allow us to scan your nose have a before, you before you start going. You slide up the size of your nose. Yeah, like character like creator for your nose. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which is amazing. <laughs> It's brilliant. It's just actually like it's character creators already have nose sliders in them. I know, but just your nose. You just like it just just yeah, okay. It's just one slider. Yeah. No, it's a big floating nose. You can like zoom in and spin it around and stuff. But that would mean you'd you'd actually experience the feeling of your own nose flying off, like your <laughs> uncle had just grabbed it between his finger and thumb and told you he'd stolen it. Well, that's the other thing is apparently like when things go wrong slightly, like when things glitch out a bit, it makes you feel quite immediately physically sick, which means like buggy games. People have been playing games games being a bit glitchy and buggy that's going to be a fucking thing with this it's like you're going to have to make sure that games are tight because <laughs> yeah. if you suddenly have a bug it's like people are just going to feel like really ill really quickly yeah, like talking... y- your arms just fly off and go around the room <laughs> <laughs> just, just, just as a punishment Never Dead would be a terrible game in VR <laughs> <laughs> oh, we'll go oh, that's a bit of an obscure one that's yeah, a but I remember, yeah. fell off all the limbs <laughs> could fall yeah, off yeah. and there's a roll around and collect them again it was the worst game in the fucking world <laughs> I remember you reviewing that you were really unhappy while doing it oh, three out, I can give it three out of ten yeah fair enough I've given worse <laughs> yeah <laughs> but um, yeah he was telling me that he'd like had to work in the dev kits all the time and it meant that he was like oh yeah you just get really ill all the time and every now and then something will be slightly wrong and suddenly you'll just feel like really ill like immediately one mm. thing which I can't get my head around said that one time it, it bugged out so that one of only one of the eyes was panning up and down when he moved his head up and down, which meant like the left and right panning was perfect. But when he looked up, one of his eyes would go up and the other one would stay at the same level. And uh, yeah. Yeah, precisely. <laughs> just imagining that makes my head go, ah. Jesus. 
But my favourite anecdote about VR, uh, which I heard at the show... I'm trying to simulate that by fing- like fingering, fingering above eyeball. my eyeball and f- scrolling it down <laughs> as I look up. I didn't want to ask what you were doing. <laughs> so I, was, I was scrolling my eye like a mouse wheel. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, this guy, we heard this amazing story, and I've just been laughing about this for days, um, about a dev who basically found putting the headset on before he went to sleep quite soporific because he had trouble sleeping, and he found that if it was like a beach or something... And then he put the headset on. <laughs> no. Yeah, no, seriously. I've like, gone asleep in virtual reality. Yeah. That's you, not good. It doesn't work. Well, <laughs> were you just watching a gigantic farting bumhole above your mouth? <laughs> <laughs> yes. I was hiding behind a bush in City 17. <laughs> yeah, but like, but go the ahead. fucking scanners would come by every now and then and snap a picture of you and wake you up. <laughs> yeah, that's the thing. It's like going for, going for a nap behind a hedge in City 17 sounds like the worst place to sleep in the world like hey why don't you go and have a relaxing snooze in this oppressive sci-fi dystopia on the street no Um, but he'd be like on a beach and he's found it like he couldn't sleep but he found that actually it'd be quite nice listening to the waves having the beach Um, and he did it for a while he had to stop doing it when one night he woke up at three in the morning didn't know where he was but then couldn't see his hands or his body and thought he was dead. <laughs> <laughs> Which is amazing. Just the idea, he just, I can't do it anymore because he, he literally thought he was dead. I almost thought he'd gone to, if not heaven, then a very tame hell. I was quite looking forward to VR porn until I realised I'd have to have my nose in there. You, it doesn't have to be your nose. <laughs> no, I, don't, I don't want my nose in porn. That'll be the next level fancy though, won't it? It'll be like, it'll be porn and you'll be fucking something. <gasps> God, you'll have, you be Pinocchio. But you'll have a big black nose. Wouldn't that be cultural appropriation? <laughs> <laughs> For the purposes of porn, it's okay. Okay. <laughs> I want the feature now. I don't think I want one. On one. one. No. And now it's time for Steve's regular feature. No. Women. Oh, you can't live with them. Actually, no, you can. I do live with a woman. Hey, I've just been reminded. We have that you great You won't guy. live with them. I won't live with them. Who's the guy who did a little video of all of the overlapping, all of the live show Steve's doing the intro? What's this? Someone has made... Yeah, this every... is brilliant. This is really good. Yeah, so someone took all the videos from the live shows and synced up my... It's James Vokes. I'll play it for you now. Okay, right? here we go. I like it. You can do really easy things. Yeah. 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 Well, my features are nice. Thing with the oh. 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 I'll, I'll tell you after. Oh. 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 Yeah. You are. Hey. Hey. Like, yeah. You're yeah. 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 Got ten got to do his feature in a bit. Don't be a dick. And now it's time for his regular feature. That's amazing. So that's five live show videos all synced up and why it sounds like it's kind of... It's like me coming at you from five different alternate realities and I've jumped through a portal to give you a feature. <laughs> so I'm sorry to interrupt you there, but it seemed like after you'd said that, it was, was the relevant time. Very relevant, yes. And I thank you for the interruption, the right honourable Matt Lees. You're welcome, the right honourable <laughs> Stephen Hogarty. With good reference to James Vokes for doing that, who is a good man, I think. Yeah, James Vokes, thank you. <laughs> that was marvellous. I am Steve... And this is the feature that I do. That's my new one now. I'm going to do that one from now <laughs> oh. on. Women. And the Gasp. things, what they say that they are. Well. But in carrying on with my last feature, a little story before I get to my feature. Oh, good. I hope it's <laughs> like, how, how a woman done you wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I've been on, I also went on a holiday. I went to the Caribbean. I was on a holiday. I was working, Steve. Holiday. It, you went to a, a foreign place that was hot. That's a holiday in my books. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you went on an amazing holiday. I went to Nevis of St. Kitts and Nevis fame. Liberated from the British in 1983, where it gained its independence, but remained a Commonwealth country. Uh, it was settled. <laughs> and, and, and it was, uh, yeah, go on. Yeah, I'm yeah. impressed that you're not actually reading this directly off your phone on a piece of paper, so I'll, I'll take this as genuine chat. Settled by the French and the British couple uh, during the colonies' eras. They arrived there, set up a bunch of sugar plantations. The British and French, they fought over the islands, and the, the local Carib... Um, indigenous people would often fight them back. and But it was really nice. The British and the French... It was, that doesn't sound they, really nice. They got together oh. to massacre the Caribbean oh, nice. oh. Indians. 
and um, yeah, kills them all. Because there's been a lot of tensions between the British and the French in history. So it's, it's nice, nice when they put the guns together. Yeah. yeah, and massacred them all. And um, then they brought in loads of African slaves to run the sugar plantations, forming the, the West Indies uh, community as we know it today. Most of my information from that does come across from Assassin's Creed's games. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Oh, from the recent pirate one. Well, yeah, yeah. That, that yeah. kind of, that, that was the era, wasn't it? But I, I was there. I wasn't, there's no, there's really no way of, of saying what I do or why I go to places without seeming like a dick. Just say you do. You just, just, you just end up in these places. I just go to these places. Well, you're reviewing really expensive places. Reviewing a luxury beachside villa. Yeah. If you think, if you think free games is a problem. Yeah. All of, all the problems that the games industry seems to have with freebies and stuff. Yeah. Oh, I got a free USB stick. No. Oh, I've got oh. a thing I can plug in, and it's a really weak lamp that I can point <laughs> at my dock, my keyboard. It's like oh, when I showed up at my beach villa my butler had a rum punch ready for me oh are they trying to bribe me into giving the place a good review <laughs> yeah yeah it's, it was a nice time there were monkeys outside the villa now that's racist these <laughs> <laughs> beamies there punch <laughs> and they would eat sea grapes in the morning and in the evening what are sea grapes the sea grapes, grapes you've left in the sea the grapes that grow by the sea <laughs> it's like this is like when you're fed up with fruit that your butler's brought you. You just chuck it out of the window. All right, it's a Let sea the... orange now. <laughs> it's hardly more tasty than sand apples. <laughs> um, but I would like I would go to um, the outdoor shower with a pile of fruit, and I'd throw the fruit at uh, towards the monkeys. <laughs> Thinking, oh, maybe I could lure the monkeys over to me, whereupon I could catch one. <laughs> <And> get, <laughs> maybe <laughs> I'd pop one into my foreskin and get a reach around. <laughs> but the monkeys weren't having it. Bananas, oranges, a full slice of watermelon, they just weren't having it. They loved sea grapes, and sea grapes is all they wanted. They imagine that being like a boomerang. Right? Yeah. <laughs> a, a watermelon. Oh, why is this like, slice of watermelon <laughs> coming back? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So that's um, uh, the watermelons. Um, oh, the T-shirt. So the interesting T-shirt that I saw while I was over there. So there's, there's, on this you trip. didn't find a thing that the monkeys actually did like in the end? No, they only gave a shit about sea grapes. Oh, okay. And they would just stare at me like I was a fucking asshole throwing fruit around. <laughs> Look at that. Is that a sea grape, mate? <laughs> yeah. Not a sea grape. <laughs> <laughs> there was this man. He was wearing a T-shirt, and it had a picture of an astronaut standing on the moon holding a cardboard box. And above and below was written PHL7 relaunch 2014. One small step for Amazon, one giant leap for PHL7. <laughs> oh my god. I yeah, okay, so naturally you went over to him and asked him what the fuck he's talking about. <laughs> oh, he looked a bit strange. I didn't know, want to know what that was all about. I An couldn't... Amazon employee. Anyway, now it's time for my feature. Really? You like the funny thing with putting a story in because Precious few women so far. <laughs> Are you all familiar with the Meredith Brooks song, Bitch? Is that, I'm a bitch, I'm a fucker, I'm a twat, I'm a cunt. Wait. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a quiz. Okay. <laughs> I'm really ashamed of myself. <laughs> you really should. Well, you, you, you've soaked up some of the more obvious answers right now. It's simply... Can you name all of the things what Meredith Brooks says she is in the song Bitch? Yeah. And you have to go back and forth. Log. Can I start with Bitch, the obvious one? Go. Yeah. What? Uh, liar. No! What? She never says liar. Oh no, I got mixed up. Log. Mother. Yes. Child. Yes. Sinner. Yes. If you say the other one, that's cheating. Lover. Yes. Saint. Yes. Oh, I guess much tougher from one. You got all the big ones now. I'm gonna to have to press. Health? Them. No. Health? Was it hell? hell. It's oh, hell. I miss it's hell. hell. I'm, I'm hell. I'm, I'm your, your hell. hell. As I said, I'm your health. I'm a smell. She's not a smell. I'm <laughs> gonna to have to call it there. I think Log got the most points. Oh, I did, but oh. I got mixed up because I remembered that song as being like. I'm a sinner, I'm a saint, I do not take complaints. <laughs> <laughs> That's those, how I always remember it. For those playing along at home, uh, she is a bitch, a lover, a child, a mother, a sinner, a saint. She will not feel ashamed. All right. 
She's your hell, she's your dream, and she's, she's nothing, nothing in, in between. between. I was thinking about dream, but I couldn't get rid of her. I do not take complaints. <laughs> do not take complaints. <laughs> Please direct complaints to... <laughs> um, but then there's also the oft-forgotten uh, last verse in which she says she's a bitch, she's a tease, she's a goddess on her knees, she's your angel on the cover, she's been numb, not currently numb. That's a trick one. Ah. She's revived and she can't say that she's not alive, meaning she is... Dead. Dead. Alive. Ah. <laughs> oh, God. That was a tricky one. Yeah. Now that you've warmed up, <laughs> okay. we move on to Alanis Morissette, Hand in My Pocket. Oh, fucking hell. <laughs> Jesus. I'm going to give you the first line, the first part of the lyric. You need to give me what, what the correct ah. one is. Okay. I'm going to start. I'm going to start with Log. I'm broke, but I'm humble. Happy. Oh, fuck. Incorrect. Oh. Matt. Yep. I'm poor, but I'm... High. Paralyzed. No, no, no. <laughs> I'm poor, but I'm kind. Okay. It's better to be high. I'm going to I'm gonna take Buzz in for now, because y- you guys maybe don't know your last more set. I'm short, but I'm... Heighty. No. <laughs> Heighty. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's heightful. <laughs> <laughs> No, it's actually I'm short, but I'm healthy. Okay. What? Well, who yeah. would ever imply that it's not? That's actually dwarfish. You know what I mean? You look a bit short today. You feel all right? <laughs> I'm high, but I'm paralyzed. Shorty. <laughs> I'm high and I'm paralyzed. <laughs> Somebody get me down. <laughs> Bored. Grounded. What? I'm sane, but I'm wackadoo. <laughs> Overwhelmed. <laughs> I'm lost, but I'm... On uh, a bus. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on my way. <laughs> I'm lost, but I'm sure I'll be there in 20 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> right, we've just finished verse one. <laughs> okay, here we go. I feel drunk, but I'm... I'm drunk, but I'm... Sober. It's it's sober. sober. It's, it's the only sober. answer that I'm drunk, yeah, yeah. but I'm sober. I'm young and I'm erotically charged. <laughs> underpaid. Oh. I'm tired, but I'm f- f- faking it. Working. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and what it all comes down to. I care, I but I I'm. This is this is these these ones don't make sense. I mean, now. she's not a good lyricist. I'm just putting that out there. I care, but I'm restless. I'll give you that one. I'm here, but I'm. This ah. is a good one. I'm here, I'm here, but I'm... I don't know, I'm vacant. I'm here, but I'm really gone. Uh, yeah. Oh, that's actually the high one. Yeah. I'm here and I'm really, oh, God, now you've done the voice. It's all coming <laughs> back to me. Right, we'll move on quickly from this because she really does devolve into some nonsense after that. For the bonus Alanis Morissette round, where is Alanis Morissette... I'll try it again. <laughs> <laughs> where, <laughs> where is Alanis Morissette's hand? I right like now. <laughs> I like that third time you, you just gave up the pace. Yeah. I'm just going to do this. I can't do Alanis Morissette. You just did. Oh, yeah, I did it. Do it right, again. Here we go, here we go. Where is Alanis Morissette's hand? Right now. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> okay. Uh, famously in the song, Hand in My Pocket, Alanis Morissette has one hand in her pocket while the other hand is doing something peculiar. Can you name the five things her other hand does in the song? Pressing a button on a lift. No. W- wagging it at a hostage. <laughs> <laughs> No. <laughs> Squeezing a policeman's bum. <laughs> no. Um, Come on. <laughs> ro- rolling a plasticine snake on the table. <laughs> None of these are the correct answers. Filing tax returns. No. You need two hands for that. Nah, I could do it with one hand. Come on. See how many ping pong balls she, she can pick up with one hand. Because <laughs> <laughs> I've got one <laughs> hand in my pocket <laughs> and the other one <laughs> seeing how many <laughs> ping pongs I can <laughs> pick up in one hand. <laughs> Shall I put oh. you out of your misery? I know. One of them's uh, slip in a high five or something. See, it was slip a high five. It was something like that. Yeah, it's Giving a high five. Yeah, but I'm sure in the song she says she she phrased it in a very in a very whimsical way. You slipping you are a greasy high a secret high five. Yeah. After we've just made a Imagine that. quiet joke at someone else's Take, else take this and then, and then just go... That's <laughs> not a high five. That? high five. That's down below that oh, one. Yeah, oh, it's a sneaky five. <laughs> um, for those playing along at home, the five things a hand's doing. Giving a high five, flicking a cigarette, giving the peace sign, playing the piano, and hailing a taxi cab. Ah, they all, they all do ring bells. Yeah. Oh, why would you... 
If you're playing the piano, why would you have one of your hands in your pocket? Yeah, it's a bad, that's well, bad Why form. wouldn't you just take out the other hand and play it proper, Alanis? Maybe she's just like sidling up to it in a bar with one hand in her pocket. Or maybe she's playing a duet with a, a beloved friend. Maybe she's sat on the stool. What, a beloved with... friend who lives in her pocket? Maybe it's Tori Amos <laughs> sat next to in her. In her pocket? And Tori Amos, is, well, she fucking goes at it. So they, I'm not going to put my hands, two oh, hands on the piano. You put it in your pocket just for safety? Get burned off. I'll just stick to the couple of high notes going. Well, Tori Amos plays the piano. If she had any respect for Tori Amos, she'd have one hand covering her mouth. The gas <laughs> at the t- sheer piano playing talents of Tori Amos. Well, she's probably got knocked off the piano stool by Tori Amos because she writhes around the thing, doesn't she? She scoots up and down it. She goes, yeah, as if she's on like the railures. Like a typewriter <laughs> carriage. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, oh. Log, is your nan dead yet? I'll check my phone. Regular features, regular features, regular features now. <laughs> That's all. So, are you ready to play Nanny Am You Dead Yet? Yeah! <laughs> Come on then, quickly, let's no time to waste. We're, we're racing against <laughs> the clock of time's natural rhythm. <laughs> so, first, everyone, take a simple card. Simple. Imagine Imagine the scene. We're all my nan. We're sitting in a, a kind of a, a lounge, and uh, we're all complaining about our most recent uh, symptom. So, so uh, adopt it. Channel my nan, and just start sitting there complaining and draining the life out of the room, please. Oh, I'm terrified of being alone to the point where I will stand on a poof and await your return. She has done that. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> um, um, uh, I can't remember who any of the people off of the telly are. Oh, I've got extreme bitchy resting face that uses up all of the vast swathes of loose skin. I just sit there looking like I hate everything. Oh. And uh, she does go on stand on a poof. That's amazing. Well, uh, well, well, actually, that's not true. That's like what dogs do. It's a huge lie, but basically... (laughs) um, But it's fun to imagine. (laughs) Yeah, she stands on a really low poof and just as a little silent protest. But she did say, I don't want to be left alone today. And then just, I've got to go to the shop. And then when we came back, she was trying to change a light bulb by standing on a poof. (laughs) <laughs> no, no, no. That'll teach you. That'll teach you. No. I'll do some light housework. And that's what. They, that's they go. Oh, oh! Don't mind me. While you're out, I've just been standing at the top of ladders. Yeah. yeah. Oh. Oh, you, oh, fi- you find yeah. me. The top. She's 96, by the way. I'll just, I'll just set fire to my dress. Then <laughs> shall I? Oh, I'm just, I'm just. You know what happens when I try to set fire to my dress when you're not here? <laughs> well, I'm rolling around on the hob. <laughs> <laughs> Tyler, now imagine you're watching that scene through a screen and take a diagnosis card, people. What is... What is what, we are now doctors Boop. in the next room. Boop. Boop. Beep, beep. Boop. Beep, beep. Doctors Boop. famously beep. 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 <laughs> well, I think she's a bit of a miserable old bitch, to be honest, when all's said and done. She's an eldritch ghoul who feeds off the potential of her daughters and needs to die. Jesus Christ, she's 96. That's like zombie territory. What do you fucking expect? It's all valid things. 96 years old? You've lost your claim on the world. What's the score? What's the score? So far, we're all... This is a cooperative board game. Yeah. Oh, we're, okay. We're, we're, we're moving time, towards... It's like the game of life. We're all pips in the same car, and then we have to kick Log's nan... Or get her back in the car, one or the other. Yeah. By the time we get to the end, we'll have worked out whether or not she's going to die today. For oh, God's oh. sake, this is important. This is important. Now it's time for the quickfire district nurse round. We've all got to give my nan a bath... For one minute, sure. speaking in broad Birmingham accents. Tuck your little, little pinny down. down. Between it. Oh, your tits buoyant. Hey, oh, oh. there's a little goldfish. I put a goldfish in the bar for oh, yeah. you. They need, they need a change of water every now and then, don't they? Goldfish is dead. 
because of all of the disgusting dirt that's come <laughs> off your filthy body. You, what is wrong with you? NHS has gone to shit, hasn't it? <laughs> eh? They shouldn't be putting goldfish in the bath. Be respecting elderly people. My my mum and my aunt blame the district nurse for my nan's current state of ill health because she said she'd report her to the hospital. Not report her, refer her to the hospital. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> I've just seen this awful woman. You should never accept her. No, no, they said that she'd refer her to the hospital, but she didn't for two weeks. So, wow. district nurse, you killed my nan. How about And district- that's why I'm so upset right now. I'm keeping all of this paper so that we can we can give this out to one lucky reader as a play at home game. <laughs> it is. Well, mm. put it on shut up, sit down. I'm sure it'll fly. I can't review this unfortunately because I know you too well, Log. Conflict of interest. Otherwise, I would be on oh, this like a, a hot spunk. Well, you could interview me as the creator of the game. Yeah, I could. Anyway. <laughs> I'm up on that to get features. I'm up on that to get features. Well, that's that's how I deal with um, uh, well, trauma. If the complications didn't kill her, board games. <laughs> if the complications weren't going to kill her, then that improv definitely did. <laughs> it was terrible an improv. <laughs> I was bad. I didn't realise we had to do improv. It's She's possible, isn't it? <laughs> she hasn't died. <laughs> we certainly did. <laughs> oh. Yeah. oh, how about that? Thank you for listening to Regular Features. Maybe, maybe our death will have given her an extra few days. That's how she does operate. It's not by sucking the life out of other people. <laughs> yeah. Do you love you, Nat? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> you're lying. You're just pretending. Ah. You'll have to find out next week whether I love my nan or not. I do. You're just saying it. He's <laughs> you, you, you're saying you do and then mouthing you don't. Oh, no, There's no. no way I can prove it in the court of podcast law. God damn you, Log. Well, hey, so, so you know that. what that just was? That was just was the 183rd episode of the Regular Features podcast. <sighs> I'm, I, for one, I'm glad it's over. Really? If only because it brings us close to episode 184, which I know is going to be even better. Oh, uh, yeah. snaps. That's going to be a good one. Did you, did you like the one that we just did? What? Let's have a post-mortem. Much like <laughs> that one. Dead now. <laughs> 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 you know the dead body I want to dissect right now? It's not my nan. It's episode 183 of Regular Features. I thought it was all right. I, I thought know. it was pretty it was good. good. But then we just got caught out by some unexpectedly difficult improv at the end. But hey, who hasn't had that problem? I think we've been self-doubting enough in the outro. It'll play well with the readers. Yeah, I mean... It's good thinking. But hey, if you like the podcast and you'd like to help us out, you can go to patreon.com forward slash regular features and donate whatever you like per episode yeah, what, whatever per that. episode you think it brings you in personal joy yeah or you can come to a live show and see us live in it, a place that the is well are, good tickets are selling out like reasonably they are. quickly April the what I think it's April the 4th yeah. April the 4th at the Canal Cafe Theatre tickets be- are at least more, mostly sold out for that mm, one yeah. there are two more dates coming up as well there in are. May and June. And remember, if you are coming to one of the live shows uh, and you would like a T-shirt, all you need to do is send us uh, £10 to PayPal at regularfeaturespodcast at gmail.com and just let us know what size you'd like and when you'll be there and uh, we'll be there. And I might throw it at you. And I'm sorry about that. If you can't get with all that shit, either through reasons of poverty or distance, mm. then why not just give us a review on iTunes? Yes. Or just do nothing. Just lie back. Just having an awful time made better by this shit. Why not alienate a friend by making them listen to a podcast in which someone gleefully chats about his dead nan? Yeah. That's a good one. That's a good thing to do. <laughs> you can find all of the information about the, the she's not dead. shows. Yeah, she's not dead. She might be. Yet. She'd better be dead by the time <laughs> this comes out. Otherwise, I'm going to be pissed off. Oh, no. I'm going to get weeks of features out. This. <laughs> Regular features. And when she does die, I've got a feeling she's going to become a pussy pal. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that'd be so good. Oh, oh, no rest for the wicked. Yeah. Convergence. Yeah. Um, yeah, what regular feature dot yes. Re- Google regular features and find our website. I think it's quite easy to find it out. And um, yeah, you'll yeah. find all of the live yeah. show dates there. You'll get it. And all of that. Thank you for listening. We've had a fun time. We think you've, we hope you've had a fun time. As well. <laughs> I assume oh, you have too. Oh, shit. <laughs> Almost I can only assume you've had way more fun than us. <laughs> Almost crashed my car through the window of the Presumption <laughs> Cafe there. <laughs> oh, dear. Bye. Bye bye. <laughs>